Hi, I'm Tracy Hambury, Director at the National Landlord Investment Show. Um, really, really pleased to be back again with Paul Mahoney today from Nova Financial Group. Um, Paul is actually the Chairman and CEO um, of Nova. So welcome to the next edition of Landlord Investor Hour. So we've got Paul's expert advice on hand now. And first of all, welcome back to the UK, Paul. So you've uh, just flown fresh from Australia, I believe. I've <laughs> arrived a few days ago. Excellent. So you're pretty tired I would imagine. <laughs> I'm doing all right okay for, for now anyway. Excellent so it's just obviously we've got Paul here today um, first of all I just really want to find out a little bit more about Nova yep. tell us about what you guys do when you were founded so just yeah explain explain your services. Yeah cool I think it's important to explain what direction we're approaching this from um, yeah so I founded Nova in late 2014 um, after moving to the UK from Australia and running a fairly similar Company over there that we that we um, took public, um, moved to the UK and started Nova, and in short, what we are uh, sort of independent property investment advisors. So we're we're qualified financial advisors, but we focus on property as as the asset class or the investment. Um, so we help people put together a strategy for their situation, based upon their goals, uh, where they are now, where they want to be, and there's sort of timeframes. Um, put in place a strategy for helping them achieve those goals mm -hmm. and then actually implementing that strategy. So um, sourcing the right properties uh, to fit that strategy, financing them. So we have an in-house mortgage brokerage of which I'm the principal. Um, we have a property management company. So we actually manage the properties for our clients. Um, and then we, we help them build on that. So, so build a portfolio with, with the whole sort of aim of, of achieving financial outcomes, mm -hmm. you know, improving their financial position, whatever that might be for the person. But usually it's it's improved, improving or providing for their retirement at some right. point in the future. Yeah. So, so in a nutshell, that's what we do. It's very much end to end, you know. The, the problem that we found in the UK was that to, to invest in property, you, 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 people, you would usually either just do it all themselves, which, you know, if... If you're a doctor, I'm sure you're a very good doctor, but mm. you probably don't know very much about property. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, you go and speak with your local estate agent, and then they'll sell you a property in your local area. And then you have to go and speak with a mortgage broker and mm. a solicitor and a property manager and all, all sorts of different people that don't talk to each other. Yeah. Um, and therefore, the, the advice or the guidance they give you is unlikely to be aligned. Mm -hmm. Whereas when dealing with us, it's all in the one place. Yeah. So it's all very well aligned and it's all um, seamless, I suppose. Yeah. Um, helping people, you know, as I say, build yeah, portfolios fantastic. and, and, and invest in property. And as you say, you know, it's it's end to end service. So, you know, I think it's quite daunting, isn't it, when you're kind of going into the property market for the first time, especially, yeah. and there's a lot there's a lot to take into consideration and, you know, at least 10 different services that you might have to face. So yeah. so in a nutshell, Nova can sort of walk you through each and every process very simply and all within house as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. You know, so we, we have a very broad range of clients from, from first time investors in their early 20s through to, you know, high net worths or, or, you know, what some would call ultra high net worths and some people that are very experienced as well. Mm. Um, but, you know, what I've found is that as individuals, we're all limited by our resources. You know, we've only, myself included, we've only got so much time, knowledge, experience. There's always gaps. Yeah. And a service like ours, you know, a team, a group of companies has those resources in abundance compared to any one individual. Yeah. So we can help fill those gaps and at the very least act as a bit of a sounding board. Yeah. When you mentioned about it being daunting. Well, it is. You know, mm. property for anyone, hundreds of thousands of pounds is a lot of money, mm. um, regardless of how wealthy you are, especially if you're not that wealthy and that's all you've got. So giving people more confidence in their decision-making process is, is a big part of what we do. Yeah, fantastic. And then, and obviously, um, with Nova as well, you mentioned about sort of sourcing the property as well. So I know you guys um, you're pretty much throughout the UK, isn't it? I mean... Where at the moment seems to be the sort of, you know, the good sort of tips on, on buy to areas, would you say? Yeah, so, so we do cover the whole country. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have tended to, to focus on particular locations, mm -hmm. not, not, not for any other, not, not because we're tied to them, but because we've found that they have the strongest fundamentals. So, you know, we go back eight or nine years when we first started the company. Mm -hmm. And for example, there was a lot, lot more opportunity in London. You know, prices hadn't risen as much. 
um, rents in comparison to prices were a bit better. So there were some more opportunities that made sense from a, from a buy to let perspective. I think that's important for me to clarify as well. Most of what our clients do is, is more sort of passive buy to let. Mm. Um, as opposed to you know developing property, which yeah. which is a profession in itself and and quite time consuming and more risky, that works for some people. Maybe if you're a builder or a developer, that works yeah, for you. Yeah. If you're not, then you, then it probably yeah. probably doesn't. Most of our clients are um, they have resources available, but they're time poor. Yeah, you know they're usually singles or couples with full time jobs that often have families and very little spare time to yeah. be going out. And doing everything themselves to to give themselves 100% confidence in making the right decisions. Um, so <clears throat> when when it comes to doing that, you know, as I say, that confidence is very important. Um, we, we we're constantly th- there's two sides to our business. You know, there's the front office, which is actually meeting with and 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 engaging with clients yeah. and, and and managing them on an ongoing basis. And then there's the back office, which is constantly searching for, for the best opportunities in the right locations. Um, and that's kind of how we go about property is we want to find best possible locations first. That's our main focus, mm. really. Locations and what's driving those locations. So things like, well, you know, areas where we've done really well are locations that are livable now mm-hmm. and very, very close to all of the amenities, but don't quite have all of the amenities right now. Yeah. But are within walking distance of those things. Yeah. They're locations that we've done extremely well over that sort of past eight or so years where, you know, you, you, you've, you've got fast-growing locations such as places like Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool, um, just on the fringes of the cities. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give you a, a, an example. I always like to use examples of, well, things that, that we've done ourselves, and that's, I think, something that gives our clients a lot of confidence is that we do actually invest alongside them. Um, you know, we, we put our money where our mouth is, yeah. Um, which you know I think is is more than a lot of people yeah. in the property industry can say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, for example, a development in Salford recently, where we had about half of our client. Well, so our clients bought about half the development, right. about sixty units of one hundred and twenty. Um, I bought one, a two bed unit for two hundred and thirty five thousand pounds. Um, completed on it about three months ago. It's renting for more than we expected when, when, when we originally originally did our research, yeah. um, and it's increased in value by about fifty thousand pounds. Okay, yeah. Um, over the sort of twelve to eighteen month period yeah. from when we originally invested to now, so you know my twenty five percent deposit um, has tripled pretty much. Yeah. Um, on, on, on that investment. That's so a nice twelve to eighteen months. Not, worth, not, not isn't bad. It? <laughs> in, not bad in that sort of yeah. time frame. So um, that, that's that's the type of thing that we like. We like to look for strong infrastructure spending, um, employment growth, essentially reasons for p- new and the right type of people mm. to want or need to live there. Yeah. Um, so not necessarily having everything. You know, for example, we can look at Chelsea in London. Lovely place, yeah. <laughs> but it's already got everything. It has, yeah, and it's super and expensive. expensive. Yeah, and, and and areas like that tend to be very cyclical because in good times when everyone's got loads of money, yeah, they buy there. But in bad times when they start losing money, they need to sell their ten million pound place in Chelsea just to survive. Yeah, um, so they tend to be very very cyclical. Whereas in, in more affordable growth locations where you have those strong fundamentals. They tend to be a lot more sustainable, because you know, for me, for example, I'm, I'm doing all right. But you know, that that fifty grand or so that I put into the unit in Manchester, mm. I, I don't need that back, and at no point really will I need it back. Um, so, so, so I suppose that's the difference. The long term investment tends to be yeah. a lot more stable. It tends to be a lot more long term, yeah. e- even in even in a bad economy. Yeah, I mean that brings me actually on to the, the sort of next. Um, get your opinion, you know, is there going to be a property crash? Everyone is asking this at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, so this is one of the talks that I'm doing at the show. Yeah. Um, and, and it's a common common question at the moment. Um, and it's always a common question following a period where we've had a really good run. And I think that's important to keep in mind is that, you know, the, the past sort of 12 to 18 months 
property in the UK on average yeah. has grown by about 15%. Yeah. Which is an incredible, you know, is, yeah. amount for property to grow in value over that short period of time. And that's that's good. That's really good. And you know, some areas have grown by more like 20 to 30%. <clears throat> now, that's a good thing, but for people who invested before that. But it's not necessarily a bad thing for people who haven't yet invested or are thinking maybe they've missed the boat because Probably the most common question we're being asked at the moment is, you know, have I, have I missed the boat? Am I too late? Should I wait to invest at some point in the future? But the thing is, you, you, you don't invest in the UK property market. There's no such thing, really. Mm. You, know, you can only invest in individual properties in individual locations, which tend to be driven by very individual driving factors. You know, so for example, Salford in Manchester, mm. that has its own reasons for increasing in value, which are very different to properties in Chelsea in London, yeah. for example. Um, and therefore, those locations, regardless of the overall market, are going to perform very, very differently. So what, what we try to do is not just focus on returns or, or, or reasons for, for returns, but also reasons for, for mitigating risk. Mm-hmm. So the the the, 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 be- the beauty to property in our mind is that there ve- there are very few risks really. The, the main risk is not being able to service your costs. Mm. But if you have a tenant that pays you a decent amount of rent, and that rent is more than your costs, and you're confident in having a tenant most of, if not all the time, mm. that risk is mitigated, and therefore. That there are very few other risks, really, mm. if it's a good property in a good area. So that's really what we focus on is not just locations that are going to move in the right direction, but the properties that are going to be under very strong demand. Mm. And I think that's a bit of a pitfall or where some people go a bit wrong, sort of trying to follow what I've just mentioned there about growth locations mm. or areas that, that that might grow because they're five or ten miles from a from a sort of city centre yeah. or, or an employment hub, you know, maybe a bit too far out. And the, the, the downside to that is that maybe they do, but also mm. maybe they don't. And, th- and that, that gentrification or, or, or sort of um, you know, improvement process can take a very long period of time sometimes, mm. or sometimes it can happen very quickly. But in the meantime, you need to have a tenant. Yeah. Um, and if you're investing in a location that is simply undesirable now, then, then the demand for those properties isn't going to be very strong. And that's where you can run into problems. Yeah. If, you, if your property is empty, you've got maintenance costs, you've got your mortgage costs, uh, you know, and, and therefore you're having to fork that out of your own pocket. Yeah. Whereas you know, a place like, and I mentioned Salford in, in, in Manchester, Salford's quite a big area. This is central Salford mm-hmm. being like very, very close to the city, you know, 500 metres to the city centre. So an area like that where you've got, Literally, you know, tens of thousands of jobs in spinning fields right across the canal. There's, there's always going to be demand mm. for that type of property. Even if we have the biggest recession in history tomorrow, there's still going to be people that need to live there. Yeah. Um, so, so that's quite important. It, yeah. It is thinking about mitigating the downside, not just trying to take advantage of the upside. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, I had someone asked me the other day, was it a good time to sort of refinance um yep. so they've got some money ready so yep. you know if if it you know if something does happen that they're ready to you know they're ready to buy i yep. mean what would your advice be on that at the moment well it would have been better to do it six months ago <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i mean you know I, I i locked in a lot of my mortgages for five years about six to 12 months ago um at well and truly below two percent um which is free money Mm. You know, we've, we've got inflation at the moment of circa 10%. Um, so if you're able to borrow at two, mm. effectively you're making 8% a year yeah. um, on your borrowings um, simply through the depreciation of the pound. Um, so, so look, I think, I think it's always good to have access to, to resources. Mm. Um, obviously, if you're going to be remortgaging properties, then you need to make sure that the debt you're going to take on them... well. You don't even need to make sure this. The bank will make sure yeah. this, that the debt on the property is sustainable from the income on the property itself. Yeah. So something, 
A change which I think is quite good in the market over the past few years is that lenders have brought in benchmark rates, meaning that you can only borrow up to a certain amount based upon the rent the property generates. Mm -hmm. um, and that's quite a good thing because it, may, it means you're far less likely to get yourself into cash flow issues. Mm. So the bank will do that for you, or you, at least your mortgage broker will do yeah. it for you. Um, and yes, if you if you got if you have equity there that's usable, um, a quote which you know I'm sure I stole off someone at some point, but mm -hmm. I use it a lot is that property investment isn't about timing the market; it's about time in the market. Yeah, you know a lot of people, and again, a very common question is: Should I invest now, or should I wait a year or two? And the answer is always now. Yeah, because if you could have done it ten years yeah. ago, you would have. Everyone, in hindsight, of course you would have. And, you know, even if you invest today, and as I say, we have the worst possible recession tomorrow, if you've bought a good property in a good area, you'll still have a tenant. Yeah. On paper, you might lose 10 to 20% on the value of the property. But over the next five to 10 years, that will go back. you'll well and truly yeah. make that back. Yeah. You know, although, although history isn't always the best determinator mm. of, of sort of fu the future performance... If we look at the last recession, which was a credit crunch directly related to over over lending on property, yeah. So something that was very much property related, um, you know, total property values in the UK fell by about fifteen to twenty percent over a two year period, which you know is, isn't great, yeah. But that came back in two to three years. Um, so you know, if you if you bought in two thousand and ten. You, you would have done extremely well yeah. up until, up until yeah. now. So the point is, you, there's, there's no ticker on your letterbox. And that's another good thing about property if you mm. compare it to, to shares, for example. A lot of people don't have the stomach for shares. Yeah. And, and, and I'm probably one of them. I've, I've got a decent share portfolio, but it does hurt, especially yeah. at the moment. I've lost a fortune <laughs> over yeah. the past six months. L yeah, literally about a million pounds Wow. Um, over the past six months. Um, but I haven't actually lost it. Uh, but it feels like I have. Yeah, yeah, it's up and down. <laughs> I haven't down, sold yeah. anything. Yeah. Um, but but looking at something that was worth half a million quid mm. six months ago and is now worth a hundred grand. Yeah, that, that hurts. <laughs> it hurts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's far less likely to happen with property. Yeah. But even if it does happen, you don't know it's happened. Yeah. Um, and so long as you've got a tenant that's generating you a decent income. Then, then it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah, that that makes that all makes tons of sense. I mean, just going back to you mentioned earlier, obviously the kind of the whole solution that Nova provides in terms of um, the management. I mean, can, do you sort of help source tenants as well? Do you put anything sort of safeguarding to make sure that the client's got the right? The part, I mean, obviously all the normal checks, but yeah. is that part of the service or is it just more of yeah, the management? Yeah, so, so, so we we provide your, your usual full lettings and management yeah. service. Um, something that we've we provide in some cases is what we what we what we call a rental guarantee, but that's just for ease of understanding. It's not really a rental guarantee. Yeah. Effectively, it's where we provide a corporate tenancy to our clients. Okay. So effectively, we we become their tenant, and then we will sublet the unit. I see. Okay. To either the short term or long term market. Um, something that's become a lot more popular in recent years, obviously, is Airbnb and Booking.com, yeah. um, and especially the types of locations that we tend to focus on. Um, they are very popular for that sort of thing. Um, you know, we, we, a lot, our clients have invested in a few thousand properties in central Birmingham over the past few years. Um, and obviously, we've got the Commonwealth Games there very soon. Yeah. So, you know, all, all of the bookings in that area have gone through the roof. Yeah. Um, because the whole world is converging on Birmingham. Yeah. Um, so, so that's something that can work quite well and kind of, in some cases... Um, gives our clients some peace of mind yeah. that at the very least we're really confident we can rent them out and we take that risk away from them. That's, yeah, that's great. That's a really good service yeah. and that actually that makes a lot of sense um, you know, from, from both the client's point of view and your point of view. I mean, in terms of sort of Airbnbs and that sort of scenario, um, what's the sort of legalities now on that? Because it was, it was all started a little bit, it was a bit shady at the beginning, wasn't it? I mean, how yeah. do you kind of well, overcome that now? Well, there's some restrictions in London specifically. Yeah. Uh, I think it's I think it's a maximum of ninety days or something. Okay. You're allowed to let a property on Airbnb, but it's not policed. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of we 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 don't do a lot in London. Um, I don't think we do anything in London, in fact. But um, but uh, it, it, a lot of people do. 
um, and, and there's no one policing that rule. Mm. So, so uh, you know, I've never, never, never heard of anyone running yeah. foul of those rules. Um, one thing you do need to be conscious of, though, is some lenders don't like sh- le- le- yeah. re- uh, re- lending on short-term lets, um, whereas others are fine with it. But the way that we structure it, it's not the client that's short-term lending. Mm. Um, they have in place a, a, a yearly AST, which meets lenders' requirements. Mm-hmm. Um, therefore, they don't have to worry because some lenders are concerned, well, if you've got a tenant turning over every couple of days, what happens if that market bottoms out yeah. and then you don't have a tenant next year, for example? Yeah. Um, so, so we structure it in a way where it gives lenders confidence that won't be the case because it's our company that is actually paying the rent, mm. regardless of whether we let it or not. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And then I guess as well, you know, there's the sort of big things that, um, you know, sort of investors, landlords face is tax, the tax implications mm. and issues. I mean, is that something, do you guys help in-house with that as well? Yeah, so we do. So, so we, don't, we don't have in-house accountants, but something okay. that we certainly do provide guidance on is, is structuring. So... We, we, we obviously had some change in the market over the past few years where they brought in Section 24, which refers to the, the, the tax deductibility of uh, buy-to-let mortgage interest. Mm-hmm. Um, so <clears throat> that's resulted in a lot of people, well, the majority of people who are higher rate taxpayers yeah. investing through limited companies. Um, so rather than... Rather than um, buying in their own name, which was the traditional way of investing in property. Um, A lot of people are now setting up special purpose vehicles or SPVs for the purpose of investing in property. Mm. Um, So that that gets around Section 24, but it can also have some other benefits, especially if you're a business owner. Mm. Um, So, you know, myself, for example, um, you know, I've got property businesses in in the UK, I've got e-commerce businesses, I've got health and fitness stores in Australia, uh, and the profits from those companies can be lent to yeah. your other the companies other company. yeah. and then you take borrowings on that money and invest in property. Mm. Um, and that is something that we, f- we find that a lot of business owners, they have 50, 100, 500 grand sitting there in their business bank account that isn't working capital. They don't need it to mm. run their business, but they don't know what to do with it mm. because they don't want to take it out of the company and pay personal tax on it, you know, 40 or 45%. Yeah. Um, so it just kind of sits there. And that, that's a really good way of, you know, setting up this property business alongside your main business. It's a really good way of better utilizing yeah. that money um, and building another business alongside it, which is obviously a, a, a hedge against risk mm. as well. You know, I think if, if we're honest with ourselves, any of our businesses could go bust pretty quickly. You know, we've just had COVID, for yeah. example. That, that, that's proven Absolutely. something that no one foresaw Um you know, happened pretty much overnight. Yeah, it did. And lasted for two years. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, a lot of people went bust mm. because of that. The government did their best to, to help out, but a lot of people did go bust yeah. because of that, and, and, and it was impossible to see it coming. So, you know, for example, if you'd have built a 15 to 20 property portfolio over the past 10 to 15 years, and all of a sudden COVID hits and your business goes bust, mm. well, your properties are still rented out. Yeah. They still, they're still generating income. They're still growing in value because property was very sustain, sustainable throughout yeah. the whole COVID period. You know, to be honest with you, if you'd asked me in March 2020 what was going to happen to property prices when the first lockdown hit, mm. uh, I couldn't have told you. No. no. I, I wasn't positive. Yeah. Um, but actually... Since then, property prices have grown by substantially more than the average. Yeah. Same goes, you know, you look at the referendum. A lot of people, even the Bank of England, I think, said property prices might fall by 30%. And in fact, they've grown by more than average yeah. since then. So I think that's a good example as to why people should ignore mainstream media mm. when it comes to, to, um, to investing in property, especially. Um, not so much with shares because... Because they, 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 they are more cyclical and it's much more about the sort of consensus mm. um, and, and how confident people are in the market it moves things quickly. You know, for example, we've got, a, we've got a war in Ukraine at the moment. Yeah. And so shares have bottomed out. Um, and there's not really any other, aside from the, 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 the Fed in the US sort of stopped printing money, aside from that and, and interest rates rising a little bit, 
the, the war in Ukraine is the main reason things are bottomed out, yeah, which course. has nothing to do with shares in particular. No. It's just about confidence. Mm. Um, whereas it's had no effect on property, really, because the old sort of saying of people needing a roof over their head mm. it is true. Yeah, um, everyone, you know, that, would, that will always be the case. Yeah, you know, if, if, especially mm. as I say, in, in areas where there's strong jobs, there's strong facilities and amenities, all, all the things, all the reasons that people want or need to mm. live in a certain location. If you've got those things in abundance, there's always going to people going to be people that need to live there. Yeah. Um, so, so you can have a lot of confidence in demand for those properties, especially so in the rental market, and then from a growth perspective. Just forget about that yeah. and let it happen over yeah. the mid to long term, being you know five to ten years plus. Yeah, no, that makes all perfect sense, Paul. I mean, let's let's have a. I mean, give me some sort of case study. I mean, so I've I've got I've noticed we've got quite a, a lot of younger people coming now yep. that are actually deciding that they might not buy to move in. They want they want to stay maybe at home for a bit longer, yeah. and they want to buy an investment property to let out. And I, yep. that's you know there's I've. I've spoke to so many um, you know, young professionals that are doing that, makes sense for them. But on average, so, you know, what would you say if, if um, I came to you, what would I need to invest? I mean, obviously, temp depending on the area, yeah. but, you know, would, would 50,000, you know, would that get me off the ground? Yeah, so, so we've seen what you've just said a lot as mm. well, um, especially so those from London, the southeast, where it's super expensive. Yeah. Um, and... Young professionals today are more utility focused than previous generations. Mm. What I mean by that is, you know, previously, you know, the baby boomers, for example, wanted the bigger family home. Um, you know, they, they, and they were willing to live further away from central yeah. locations to yeah. achieve that dream. That's not so much the dream anymore, though, of, of young professionals. You know, they want um, employment, bars, facilities, yeah. amenities on their doorstep. Um, and therefore, they're, they're, they're more willing to rent for a longer period of time or even forever to, to be in those locations where they can't actually afford to buy. Mm. Um, and we, we, we've, got a, we've got a term for that that we call rent vesters, okay. where yeah. they continue to rent in the area they actually want to live um, and they invest in areas where they can afford yeah. to invest. And sometimes that can be a better investment. Not mm. always, but, but sometimes it can be. So yeah, from from a from a sort of capital perspective, you know, I'd say I'd say the minimum in the UK to buy a decent property is about thirty to forty grand. Yeah. Um, and, and that's not determined by me or, or our company. That's determined by good properties in good areas. Yeah. So you know, if you can borrow at seventy five percent, you're going to have some stamp duty and legal fees to pay, um, and therefore, effectively, you're, you're you're just under triple sorry, just under quadrupling your buying power. Okay. So if you've got fifty grand, easy example, you can buy a two hundred grand property or thereabout, just shy of two hundred grand yeah. after your costs. Um, and, and there are good properties to buy in good locations at that sort of level. Mm. So that's kind of the, I'd say that around that fifty grand mark is the sweet spot for getting a really good property in a good location. Um. You know, a lot of people come to us with 100 to 200 grand and they want to buy as many properties as possible mm. with that money, which sometimes I don't think is the best approach. I'd prefer to have less really good properties mm. than more lesser good properties. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. It's less of a headache. Yeah. Um, and you can have more confidence in, in performance. Yeah. Um, so so that's, that's a, again, a big part of what we do is just sort of providing that education and guidance on, well, what are we trying to achieve mm. and what, what's the best way of going about achieving that? Um, and, you know, we don't know everything. We, we, don't, we can't predict the market. But what we can do is provide people with an awful lot more research and confidence mm. than they would be able to achieve doing it themselves. Yeah. So, Paul, obviously, you're hugely involved in the property market and um, I think we've worked together now for maybe eight or nine years. And I know 
obviously within that time, you've done a huge amount of other things as well and other projects. I mean, one of them being um, Property Elevator, one of them being Property Summits. So explain Property Elevator. I actually love it. I really, I really do enjoy watching it. I think it's, um, you know, the Property Angels and, um, you know, we have it live at the show and you've got some great people involved in that. Yeah. Do you want us to tell us about the, you know, the others that are yeah, involved? Yeah, of course. You, you know, so I suppose over the years, you know, as you say, we have been working together for, for eight or so years and, um, it's good to get yourself out there, I suppose. Yeah. So, so I think that sort of all started out by writing my book, um, which is called The Property Pension Plan. Yeah. Um, that can be bought on our website or on Amazon and effectively talks about our approach to, to property investment. Um, from that, I moved into doing some, some, some TV things, um, which you know, we did various TV shows, uh, but I, I do believe that Property Elevator is, is the best mm. one we've done yeah. as of yet. Um, it was the brainchild of John Howard, a good friend of mine and very experienced property developer. Uh, and effectively, you know, hopefully no one sues me over this, but it's the dragon's <laughs> den of property development. Yeah. Um, so essentially, uh, developers of all levels of experience pitch to us deals uh, and uh, five property angels or whatever mm. you want to call us. I think we call ourselves angels. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> um, uh, Offer to to, mm. to 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 give them that money for you know for a, a piece of the pie essentially, um, so yeah. So as I say, it was, it was John's idea. John's a very experienced property developer of forty plus years. Yeah, he's very old. Um, <laughs> he's always right. <laughs> love to tell him how old he is, and he loves to tell me how young I am. Um, so uh, yeah, very 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 experienced, yeah. and has done pretty well every type of development over that period of time. So 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 great level of experience there. Um, I think one of the, the great things about the panel with with, um, with Property Elevator is it's it's quite diverse, mm. and we all approach things from different perspectives, and we've all learnt a lot from each other. Mm. I've probably learnt the most. I'm I'm the youngest by far mm. on the panel, which I love to remind them of. <laughs> um, but but you know, obviously, I, 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 they are more experienced than I am, and and I've learnt a lot fr from them uh, over the. What have we done? Four seasons now. Yeah. The fourth season is currently airing on Sky and is also on PropertyElevator.tv, which is the website. So, so if anyone wants to check it out, they can. Yeah. They can go to PropertyElevator.tv and sign up and watch watch all the episodes. Um, and we are filming season five in September. Tomorrow we're doing uh, yep. Property Elevator Live, which is the, the second time we've done that. Yeah. Um, and that is. A live, a, a, a series of live pitches in front mm. of you know a few hundred people, um, so, so quite daunting. I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, we actually did. Um, we actually did a, a couple of little spoof type presentations where, where each of the angels presented to the others, and I think yeah. I was buying the Sydney Opera House and John <laughs> was buying Buckingham Palace. But even though we knew we were joking, even that was a bit daunting. Yeah. You know, standing up there. The lights on you in in, in front oh, of it is. people, yeah. so I can I can yeah. I can imagine what it's like for the people who are actually pitching mm. real deals. Um, so I mentioned John. Um, the next, uh, you know, no particular order is um, Ranjan Bhattacharya. So Ranjan is, you know, pretty much the well, aside from being a bloody YouTube star, oh, he loves which, YouTube, which yeah. he loves to mention <laughs> and, I, and 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 gets mentioned lots of the show. How many uh, how many followers is he, is he on 60, now? Sixty thousand or something. Yeah, amazing. So, so, yeah. which is a lot on YouTube. Yeah. Um. So 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 yeah, he does does very well out of that. But but he's pretty much the UK's leading expert on permitted development mm -hmm. conversions. Um, permitted development being um, a change of use. So your office, commercial space converted into residential yeah um so he runs courses and things on that and, and, and knows pretty much everything there is to know about that um so again learn an awful lot from on that um then we have helen uh chorley helen's great lovely um, helen. yeah helen is an ex uh investment banker um and is very much into her numbers um she is Certainly a bit more frugal, I'd say, mm. than, than the rest of us, <laughs> which is, she will say herself, is sometimes to her detriment because it means she loses out on some deals she yeah. sometimes wishes she got. Um, uh, unfortunately, she's got COVID at the moment. Oh, and I know. stuck in Malta. So um, anyway, um, but yeah, Helen, Helen's great from a numbers perspective. I've actually recently just done a, a big deal with Helen, mm -hmm. which, which 
didn't come through the show, but came through Helen to me. Okay. Um, and that's 500 plus units in the north of England. Brilliant. That we are converting a student halls into um, social housing. Um, so that's quite cool from a, you know, not being, yeah. being able to do a, a nice thing or yeah. a required thing from a social housing perspective, but it also being quite a lucrative deal. Um, so so that, that's nice as well in that we've managed to obviously do some of the deals from the show, but then but then partner on other things outside of the show yeah. also. So I think, you know, over the, you know, having run property businesses now for, what, nearly 15 years, mm. um, I've learned a lot about what works, what doesn't, you know, all that sort of thing. And that's what we help people with on a daily basis mm. at Nova. Um, but now we're actually doing it ourselves yeah. also. Yeah. Um, so uh, moving on to Nicholas Wallwork. Um, so Nicholas you know, has, has done a lot of community development right, conver conversion stuff as well. Mm -hmm. He he builds a lot of um, bigger developments with micro studio, micro, micro studios, I think they're called. Yeah. Which I don't think you can do them anymore. But he's, he's done a lot of them up until the point where you could do them. Um, so a lot of a lot of a broad range of experience there as well. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's a great panel to be involved in. Um, you know, I, I'm proud to put yeah. my name to it yeah. because you know it is actually you know five people have a lot of experience and you know I don't think you know, it's, it's too much for me to say are the sort of leading people in in the UK property market yeah. in in various different areas. Yeah. So so you know I'd certainly encourage people to check that out. Uh, online, mm -hmm. and if you know if you are a, a a property developer or you want to be a property developer, which I think is another benefit to this show, mm -hmm. is you don't need experience to pitch a deal. You know, you can go online and find something you think that there's potential to add value to, mm. apply, pitch it to us, and and someone might give you all the money and help you do it. Yeah, um, which I don't think there's anywhere else you can do that. No, um, you know, and it's very rare. For example, if you were to go to a property networking event with a deal, to find someone who's going to be willing to yeah. do that if you've got no experience and no money, um, which is something that has happened numerous times on, mm. on the show. Because I suppose the people that you know, myself included, that have given the money, mm. are confident we can do it, so we can help the people do it themselves mm. and and help them fund it. Yes, so, um, great. So yeah, that, that, yeah, the property elevator is great. Really enjoy that show, um, and yeah, I encourage people to check it out. Yeah, and what's your what's the criteria? I mean, how how can people apply? You know, to, to get on the show on on the on the website. Okay. So literally, property t property elevator mm -hmm. um, On there, there is the ability to sign up for pitching on the show, but also to watch the previous episodes. Which, excuse me, I'd strongly encourage mm -hmm. anyone that's looking to, to pitch on the show to, to watch previous episodes mm. because there is a big difference between a good pitch and a bad pitch. Mm. Um, you know, things like the quality of the pack uh, that we're presented with. You know, sometimes people will turn up just with one sheet of paper. There's five yeah. people they're pitching to. <laughs> we literally get 10 to 15 minutes before they pitch to look at the deals. Um, so it's not a lot of, long, not a lot no. of time. Um, for us to determine if we're going to invest hundreds of thousands of pounds in someone. So if someone turns up quite unprepared, well, the, the, the order yeah. will be on the back foot. Whereas, you know, the other end of the scale is people that turn up with, you know, personalized packs for each one of us with our faces on it and our names on it and <laughs> all sorts of things, which, you know, although maybe that doesn't actually add any value to the deal, but it's nice made to see how well prepared they've yeah. been and how yeah. much effort they've put into it. Um, so, so yeah, that, that, what sort of finding out what a good pack and a good pitch is mm. before doing it, um, I, I would highly recommend because mm. it's going to give you an awful lot more of a chance yeah. of, um, of raising the money. Usually when someone does a pitch and we're all very quiet, it's a good that's one. a good sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because if someone pitches and, and, and it's not something that's investable, we'll all very quickly tell them. And we'll tell them why, and we'll, mm. we'll, 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 you know, usually try to keep in touch, and hopefully they'll they'll, they'll improve on, on whether it be the pitch or their own investability. Mm. Whereas when someone does a really good pitch and it's a really good deal, no one wants to say too much <laughs> <laughs> until we find out what the others are going to say. Yeah. Um. So so yeah. Um. Yeah, and it's enjoyable. You know, we, we, we've all known each other for years now, so, so so there's great banter between us. Um. 
uh, and that, that, that only gets better as, as you know, we, we, we've got to yeah. know each other more. No, it's fantastic. I mean, you should do one for a young property entrepreneur. I think that'd be a really, really good idea to, yep. um, you know, there's so many youngsters now, just absolutely. I know certainly my son and all his friends, you know, that, that's that's the route they want to go, but they yeah. just don't know how to do it. They but, should just apply. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. The show, isn't, the show isn't specific to mm. anyone in particular. Um, you know, you, I think, I'm trying to think... Um, there was a guy that presented on, I think it was series three, mm -hmm. that was 19, yeah. um, straight out of university. He'd actually done a development whilst in university wow. with his parents, I think. Um, and I think he did a deal with John. So, you know, there, there, yeah. there is no age limit. No, that's um, great. But obviously, it's, it's real money we're talking about. So, so the, the deal needs to stack up yeah. and the person needs to be investable themselves. Yeah. They need to be trustworthy and... And you, know, you can work out whether someone's going to do the right thing by you or not pretty quickly. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. And and what? Let, tell us about any other projects that you're sort of involved with as well at the moment. Yeah, so we're doing um, we're doing a few developments at the moment um, of varying scale. Um, you know, uh, Lizzie, who's helping me out here tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I'm doing one with her in Wrexham, mm -hmm. in North Wales. I didn't even know it was in North Wales <laughs> after after I'd bought it. Um, we, we went there. We went there a few months ago after I'd bought the site and uh, all the signs were in Welsh. And I said, where, where are we? Where are we? <laughs> um, I, it's only just south of Liverpool. So I thought, yeah. it was, I, thought it was, I thought it was England, but it's not. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, so that's two, two or maybe three houses. We're going in for three with yeah. planning at the moment. Um, we're looking at doing seven houses in Dublin at the moment as well with, with, one, of the present, with one of the people who pitched on Property Elevator. Right, okay. A chap from Dublin called Chris. Um, and, and as I mentioned, the, the, the bigger stuff, you know, Helen and I are involved in, a, I think it's 550 units um, in Bradford Yeah. at the moment um, that's just exchanged and it's all progressing quite well. So, so yeah. So um, you are very busy. Quite a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hugely busy. But, I mean, thank you so much, Paul, for, you know, everything today. And I think you've given us some really good advice. Um, I think definitely, you know, you need to watch Property Elevator if you haven't done and apply. Um, you know, I've seen it um, with my own eyes actually at our event and it's, you know, it's great fun and you couldn't be working with, you know, a group of better people that have got years and years of experts, um, you know, underneath them. So, you know, it's great to have you back in the UK, Paul, and uh, thanks very much for joining us on today's Landlord Investor Hour. And yeah, we hope to see you soon. Thanks very much, Tracy.